The Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom is Samsung's latest endeavors in the smart camera market, which is highlighted by the device's form factor. As you can see here on the front, you have a device that resembles a smartphone and it closely resembles Samsung's Galaxy S4, but in a smaller footprint. On the back side, you do have a camera that resembles most mid-range and entry-level point-and-shoot camera, along with a hand grip, xenon flash, autofocus assist lamp, 10 times optical zoom, and optical image stabilization. The Samsung Galaxy S4 represents Samsung's latest endeavors in the convergence of the camera, along with the power and ubiquitous connectivity of a smartphone to allow the mobile photographers, the mom and dads, the soccer moms out there, to shoot their to shoot life's precious moments with a capable camera and the power to share their memories to social networks, through emails, and as messages to friends and family. The smartphone uh, utilizes AT&T's 4G LTE connectivity in the US. So does the device deliver on its promise of connectivity, optical image quality, and portability and functionality? I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile and join me in this video review of the AT&T Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom as we explore the functions and features and compare the phones with other popular smartphone uh, cameras on the market including Nokia's excellent Lumia 1020 and the Galaxy camera. Both devices are also found on AT&T's US network. When you're looking at the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom, it would not be incorrect to assume that the device is a camera rather than a smartphone. And as you can see here in the middle, the Galaxy S4 Zoom bears a lot more resemblance to point and shoot cameras and even to the, its predecessors, the Samsung Galaxy camera, than to smartphones like the Samsung Galaxy S4, the Galaxy Note 3, and even the, the camera-centric Nokia Lumia 1020, which runs on Microsoft's Windows Phone 8 operating system and is compatible with AT&T's 4G LTE network. So the Galaxy S4 Zoom is a lot like a camera. It comes with a comfortable hand grip, a xenon flash with an autofocus um, assist LED lamp, along with a 10x optical zoom lens which protrudes from the camera and it has optical image stabilization. The design styling between the Galaxy S4 Zoom and the Galaxy Camera are very similar and you can see that both share very similar design styling with the Galaxy S4 Zoom being slightly smaller in size than the Galaxy Camera which um, accommodates a larger 21 times zoom lens. So you can say that the Galaxy S4 Zoom is probably half the camera of the Galaxy S or the Galaxy Camera both in terms of size in in terms of processing power as this has a quad core processor whereas this has a dual core and in terms of zoom capabilities. Another main difference between the two devices other than size and internals is that although the Galaxy camera, this one operates on AT&T's 4G um, HSPA Plus network, it doesn't operate on LTE, is that this is a data only device. So while it can connect to mobile broadband data so you can download your emails, upload photos and videos to social networks and YouTube, and stream even Netflix movies on the go, um, it won't allow you to make a voice call on AT&T. AT&T's network, whereas the Galaxy S4 Zoom connects both to 4G LTE data, which is a faster data speed, um, up to 10 times faster than 3G, and it can also make voice calls, as you can see here, with an earpiece speaker and a microphone on the bottom side to connect you to the other calling party. Essentially, this device is a smartphone on the front and a camera on the back. So depending on how you look at it, in this review, we're going to review it from the perspective of a smartphone. So this is the front side and this would be the rear side. On the front, you have a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED display, which is crisp and vibrant. It has a resolution of QHD, so it's not a 720p or a 1080p HD display, but because it op, op um, it occupies a smaller footprint, you're still going to get a relatively high amount of pixel density, so you're going to see a very crisp and vibrant display overall. 
The overall design styling is very similar to the Galaxy S4, but in a smaller package. So you're going to notice that it's going to resemble the Galaxy S4 and even the Galaxy S4 mini with a curved bottom, a center home button. That's a physical button that you press in to activate along with two capacitive touch um, buttons, one on each side of the physical home button. You have minimal side bezels and the front facing camera on the top along with the earpiece speaker and the sensors for the ambient light sensor, the infrared sensor, and also the proximity sensor. The device um, also has an infrared blaster here, so it can also control your home uh, entertainment system. So this is the ultimate convergence device. Not only is it a smartphone, a data device, a camera, and also a remote control, you can also plug in headphones and have it replace your MP3 or your CD player for music playback as well. So this is pretty much a jack of all trade device. And in the purpose of this review, we're gonna see if it masters any one or more of those trades. So in terms of camera performance, you do have a 10 times optical zoom with optical image stabilization. And I'm going to just go ahead and open the gallery. With the zoom, you can actually get in quite close to your subject um, from far away and not lose any um, image quality that way. So here are just a couple of sample images that I've taken on my walk in Half Moon Bay on a sunny day. So as you can see here, images um, appear smooth and really vibrant when you're looking at it on this normal um, QHD display here. But when you blow it up, and as you can see here, I accidentally pressed the back button, so ergonomics isn't really the best with the way the capacitive button is laid out without a grip, a uh, thumb grip for the camera portion. But here, as you can see, the image looks satisfactory on the phone screen. But once you blow it up, you're going to notice that there's um, a lot of over sharpening. As you can see with the straight lines or even with curved lines, you're going to see a lot of sharpening. And images do get quite noisy at night despite having the optical image stabilization, which allows the camera shutter to be open for longer periods of, of time without any motion blur. So despite all that, you're going to get a lot of sharpening. Um, this, and although the image looks good, um, professional photographers may not appreciate the sharpening and the digital artifacts that are present in images captured with the Galaxy S4 zoom. However, that being said, you do have 10 times optical zoom. So this camera might be a better fit for mass market people who are looking at entry level and mid range point and shoot cameras, such as soccer moms and dads who want to watch their sons play at baseball games. So even if you're far away in the stands, you can activate the zoom and with optical image stabilization, even at the furthest telephoto zoom, which has an equivalent of a 240 millimeter lens, you're going to be able to still capture images without any motion blur or very minimal motion blur um, in good lighting. So as you can see here, um, this couple, um, as you can see here, this couple from far away, you can barely see them. But if I just zoom in on the image, you can see them right there. And if I activate the 10 times zoom, you can see them um, more closely. And this is with 10 times zoom. So this gives you a good image of this couple walking um, along the beach on the cliff side. Whereas here without the zoom, this is from far away, you can see that you can barely see any of the details, but with optical zoom, you're not going to lose any of the details and you can get in close to your subject from further away. So that's the benefit of the optical zoom on the camera. And like the Samsung Galaxy S4 and even the Galaxy camera, you're going to have a number of different modes that's going to give you a lot more fine tuned control of your camera. Professional users can uh, enter into expert, expert mode where they can have access to prior, uh, shutter speed priority, aperture priority, or even full manual control where they can control both the shutter speed, the aperture, um, ISO settings, um, exposure compensation, and other aspects of the photography and the exposure. For users who are not con uh, confident enough to use the expert mode, um, you can also head into automatic mode, which just snaps your picture automatically in a, and just assigns the best settings to capture the image. There are also a number of scenes mode once you head into smart mode, and these little dials give you access to various different scenes depending on what type of picture you're trying to take. So if you're taking a macro 
image, it's gonna fine tune the camera settings to be optimized for close-ups of plants and animals and still life. For party or indoor shots, it's gonna optimize that with, that, with minimal blurring um, so that you can have an image that captures both the ambient light and light up the subject, um, even if you use flash or without the flash. And unlike um, traditional cameras where you have HDR mode, Rich Tone actually is the HDR mode on Samsung's camera. So it's just a different name for essentially the same process. And I mentioned that the camera does use only a dual core processor versus the quad core processor on the Galaxy camera and even in Samsung's flagship phones for 2013. 2013, including the Galaxy Note 3 and the Galaxy S4. And essentially what happens is that with Rich Tone, you're gonna notice the um, the delay and the lag in using a less capable processor because in Rich Tone, the camera is actually taking a series of shots and then trying to stitch it together. Um, and each shot is actually underexposed, overexposed, or at the right exposure setting. So it's gonna combine the different exposures to bring out the details both in the shadowed areas and also in the bright light areas. So um, it's gonna bring out all the details without washing out the pictures or having the picture be too dark. So when you're doing that and you're stitching multiple images together, you're gonna actually notice a, quite a bit of slowdown with the camera in processing that image. So it does take um, around five seconds for the Galaxy S4 zoom to process an HDR shot, which is quite a long time. And it takes about two to three seconds on the Galaxy camera, which has a quad core processor. So you're definitely gonna notice a slowdown in not only using the camera and launching the camera, but also in launching the applications as well with the Android operating system. And speaking of smartphone, this device does use the Android OS with Samsung's TouchWiz uh, UI on top, it's Android 4.2.2, and Samsung does include a number of different settings that are present on some of its flagship device that allows the, uh, the phone to be a little bit smarter. Once you go into the settings and you go into device, you're gonna notice um, some of the familiar uh, Controls such as smart screen, which uses either the front facing camera or an infrared sensor on the front to detect your eyes and your face. And if the device can detect your face and know that you're looking at it, it's not gonna turn off or dim the screen. Similarly with smart video, it's gonna notice that you're watching the video. And then once your face is turned away from the video, it's gonna detect that and automatically pause the video and resume playback once you start looking at the screen again. So it's just little things that Samsung added. and. Um, it's not as overwhelming as on the Galaxy S4 with a lot of different features, but you do have most of the important features uh, bundled on the Galaxy S4 Zoom. Another difference between the Galaxy S4 Zoom and the Galaxy S4 is that this device doesn't have the uh, multi-window uh, multi-window view for simultaneous multitasking. And with that, on the Galaxy S4 and even on the Galaxy Note 3, you're gonna benefit by running two applications that snap side by side, so you can have Facebook on one side and email on the other, so you can juggle between two different tasks without having to leave the window. Um, part of the reason is that this does have a slower processor. It's a dual core versus quad core on those flagship devices. It has less RAM, 1.5 gigabytes versus two or three gigabytes on some of the newer devices. And also it has a smaller 4.3 inch display. So um, running two windows side by side will feel a little bit more cramped. Um, and from a hardware perspective, um, although this device is uh, carried by AT&T and operates on the carrier's 4G LTE network, unlike other AT&T devices, you're not gonna find AT&T branding on the hardware itself. So this actually does look like the plain vanilla Samsung Galaxy S4 unlock unit that's sold internationally. So if you're a purist, this is a nice device to have. Um, so it does support LTE, whereas the unlock version would only cap out at HSPA+, which is a slightly slower uh, mobile broadband protocol. So you get the best of both worlds, the faster LTE support on at and without the gaudy branding if you're not into the branding at all. 
And when you're looking at the device compared to the international version, what you'll find um, is that AT&T did make a slight tweak to make this device more usable. When you're using the device as a camera, you're likely going to use the device in landscape orientation. And what AT&T does is allow the home screen to be able to rotate into landscape orientation. So it's not going to be as awkward to use in landscape mode. So landscape not only works inside third party apps and first party apps, it works on the home screen it works in the app drawer so um, the app drawer would rotate into landscape mode whereas this isn't possible on the Galaxy S4 and even on the Galaxy Note 3 where these main screens would be locked into portrait orientation another area where you're going to notice the landscape orientation is in the lock screen so once you switch the lock screen into landscape you're going to notice that it also rotates and then you also have a number of different widgets here for the lock screens to make it even more usable. So you don't even have to unlock the phone to launch the app to find your latest notification. So you can have an email widget, a Gmail widget, and also a communications widget, which pulls together your notifications from Facebook and Twitter. Let's go ahead and dive back into the camera mode. After all, this device is very camera heavy. So once you launch the camera, another nice feature is that you can automatically go and have not only have pictures geotagged, so you have locations as we saw earlier um, in some of the sample shots that I've taken in Half Moon Bay, it will actually display where the image was taken if it was able to locate a geotag along with um, any weather conditions that um, might display. So these images were taken at Stanford Shopping Center and it actually shows the date, um, any weather information that was pulled and also the geolocation. But there's also now a photo, um, a, a mode that allows you called Photo Suggest, which pulls in information from Panoramio, which pulls in um, just different locations nearby, which you can go to take scenic photos. So these are just some of the different photos that previous users have uploaded. So nearby, if you want to check out some sites, if you're traveling and you don't know where to visit, and if you like the this scene and this picture, you can actually just preview it and then you can figure out where to go to take the photos that way. So it's a great discovery tool for tourists who want to use this as their camera while they're traveling as it gives you phone and data access as well. Additionally, with the device, there's also now a zoom ring. So unlike other phones where you're using the volume button to, to zoom, on this device, you can actually twist this ring here on the side of the lens and it would zoom in and out. So this would give you up to 10 times zoom. The main complaint I have with this is that the zoom isn't so gradual. It does start out gradual in the beginning where it goes from 1 to 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 6, 1.8, 2.2, 3.1, 4.2, and now it begins to jump to 5.6, to 7.9, and then to 10.0. So at the higher zoom ranges, you're not gonna be able to have more minute control over the zoom ring, which is rather unfortunate. So you can't have like an 8.3 zoom because it doesn't fit into the predetermined or preset zoom that you can have with the software. If you're outside of the camera um, application and you just begin to twist the ring, um, it will take you into this dial where you can select from a number of different modes. So this would actually quickly launch you into night mode, auto mode, or macro mode. So this way you don't have to mess around with the touch screen, launch the camera, and then figure out what mode you want. So these are just some of the pre-configured modes. So if I wanna take a landscape mode or even a macro mode, I could just twist the ring um, Let's go back to the home screen. I can just begin by twisting the ring and it would launch this um, photo dial mode. And then I can just go ahead and tap onto macro mode and then it would launch the camera and then put me into macro mode as you can see. And then with macro mode, the nice part about this is that unlike other cameras, you can actually get in fairly close to the subject and still have the camera focus, which is a nice part about macro. So, even this close to the Galaxy camera, I can still take a, a picture that's uh, very in focus. So that's uh, one of the main differences between um, the Nokia Lumia 1020 
and uh, the Samsung Galaxy camera is that in macro mode, um, the Lumia 1020 can't get as close in on the subject, so it has a further focal distance. So you have to be back a little bit, and when you're back a little bit, you're not going to be able to um, have an image that's tightly cropped like this. You're going to have an image that's closer to this, and then after you take the image, then you can zoom in and then crop the image to have the macro shot that you want. So that's um, one of the main differences in macro modes between the two cameras. Cameras, and I actually prefer the macro mode on the Galaxy S4 Zoom if you're into taking pictures of insects, still life, flowers, or other types of macro photos. The device does have a front-facing camera. Um, unfortunately, on the front-facing camera, you're not going to have um, a wide-angled lens or as wide of an angled lens as you would on the front-facing camera on the Nokia Lumia 1020. So what this means is that if you're, you know, with a small group, like with four or five people, um, you're not going to be able to fit everyone in, or you may not be able to fit everyone in with the front-facing camera. It's a two megapixel front facing camera on the Galaxy S4 Zoom as you would on the, on the Nokia Lumia 1020. I have a shot, I have some sample shots on the Galaxy S4 Zoom review on gottabemobile.com. So be for sure to visit www.gottabemobile.com and search for uh, Galaxy S4 Zoom review where we have sample shots taken with the front and the rear facing cameras of both uh, phones um, to give you an idea of how tightly cropped um, the cameras are on, the, on, on both devices. And as this device does run the full Android operating system, you're going to get the benefits of Android's um, robust ecosystem. So you're going to have the Google Play Store, which will give you access to a number of uh, third-party applications, to Google Music, games, movies and TV, books and magazines. So this essentially could replace your digital magazine reader, your e-reader, um, along with your digital camera. You're going to have Google Maps, so it's going to replace your GPS. Um, as well. So it's an all-in-one device. It does a lot of different tasks, but the main drawback with this device, as we've mentioned before, is that it does have an anemic um, dual-core 1.5 gigahertz processor. So if you're a light user, you don't use too many apps, you're not going to notice um, a slowdown at all. But if you're starting to load the uh, device up with a lot of third-party apps um, through the Play Store, if you're running multiple apps without closing them and multitasking a lot, and if you're just launching the camera and taking a lot of pictures during the day, what you're, notice, you're going to notice is that the device does tend to slow down. And this is somewhat problematic with a camera focus because it's going to mean that you're going to miss a lot of the spontaneous shots that you would be able to capture with a just an entry level or even a mid-range point and shoot camera. So if you are holding your camera in landscape or landscape orientation and it was last in portrait orientation, you're going to have to wait a couple seconds for the screen to rotate. You're going to have to unlock the screen first. Um, and then this actually is quite, moving quite fast, but sometimes it does take a couple seconds for each step to happen. And then you're going to have to launch the camera and then take the uh, picture. So if there are any lags and slowdowns, it could take up to 7 to 10 seconds. But if there aren't any lags, just doing these steps can take between 4 and 7 seconds itself. So although it doesn't sound like a long delay, if you're trying to capture that random moment that your pet or your child is making, that random funny or silly face that someone's making, um, you're likely going to miss those memories using the Galaxy S4 Zoom. Another gripe with the camera is that at night, even though this device does have optical image stabilization so that the shutter speed gets open for a longer period of time, what you're going to notice is that the optical image stabilization isn't quite as good as on other phones and you're going to notice a lot of blurry shots if you're not holding the phone um, steady. And part of the problem is with the um, image stabilization and the way that night photography works on the Galaxy S4 Zoom is that it's similar to HDR in that it will take a series of pictures and stitch them together to get the uh, best 
exposure and correction for night uh, photography. So unlike the Lumia 1020, which just does it in one, um, just in one swoop, this one takes multiple pictures and it stitches it together. So you have to hold the camera really steadily for the picture, for the series of images to be taken and then stitched, else you're gonna get a lot of um, blur with the camera. So this isn't motion blur, it's just blur, it's just camera shake. And another uh, problem with night photography is that um, these images were taken um, just with outdoor lighting at a mall and at night. And once you start zooming in, you're going to notice a lot of noise. So although the camera does have optical image stabilization, which helps with uh, keeping the shutter speed uh, to stay on longer and to help um, not have to push the ISO up, um, the camera does push the ISO up into territories where there's going to be a lot of noise um, when you're taking pictures at night. So that's another unfortunate thing. It does have a backside illuminated sensor, so it does it's able to capture a lot of light, but it's not able to do so without pushing the ISO up if you're using the camera without the xenon flash at night. And images appear to be somewhat more muted than on the um, than on the Lumia 1020 for those who are interested in um, choosing between this device and the Windows Phone device. Um, images captured with the Galaxy S4 Zoom, um, the colors are more, are more true to real life than on the Lumia 1020, which has um, images that are more saturated than um, they would appear in real life. So this does, um, the benefit is that it does have colors that are a little bit more realistic, but on a hazy day, um, what you're gonna see is that colors don't pop and are more muted than what you would um, like them to be. So overall, although the Samsung Galaxy S4 tries to be a camera and a phone together, um, Samsung did skip quite a few corners to make this device um, more affordable. It's $200 with a two-year contract, which is the same price that the Nokia Lumia 1020 sells for. But to skip those um, corners, um, Samsung is able to deliver a little bit more in terms of a xenon flash, optical image stabilization with a 16 megapixel um, backside illuminated sensor and a 10 times optical zoom. Um, the downside is that you're gonna end up with a dual core processor that could get laggy if you're using the phone throughout the course of a day. And that means that um, you're gonna have to either soft reset the phone by pressing and holding um, the power button and just hitting the reset option or removing the battery, um, which is in close encased on this bottom portion. So once you remove this plastic flap, you have access to the battery on the bottom of the device. So you can either do either of those two steps and once you reset it, it's gonna reset the memory so it's gonna perform more fluidly than before. Um, and also, Samsung used a little bit of a relatively inexpensive lens rather than the Carl Zeiss lens that's found on the Nokia Lumia 1020. And in reality, what you're gonna have is that the pictures Although they're over sharpened, in reality, they're, the focus is a little bit more soft than the focus on the Nokia. So the Nokia actually has better focus. It's a sharper image that's not as overly processed as the images on the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom. Be sure to visit gottabemobile.com for a full written review where you're gonna find detailed photos, sample video clips, and more information about the device and comparisons to the uh, Nokia Lumia 1020. I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile. Thanks for watching this video review of the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom. Be sure to visit us on the website, subscribe to our videos, and check us out for more video reviews to come.